Facebook live stream. Test, test, one, two. Audio test for Facebook live stream. Facebook live stream, Trenton, New Jersey. All settings correct. Audio working. Test complete. Well, on this um, somewhat rainy day, we bring sunshine to this day. I'm Bonnie Watson Coleman. I'm a member of Congress, and I represent the 12th Congressional District where we are today. And I am with two phenomenal women as we take on what we think is a most precious and significant issue as it relates to our democracy, fairness, and equality in our, in our country. For decades, conservative Republicans and their powerful donors have worked to undermine democracy, and they've used the Supreme Court to accomplish it. They've stolen Supreme Court seats and even lower seats, refusing to allow a democratically elected president to appoint judges and justices with the express purpose of bending the law to their will. They've overturned established law protecting women's rights, workers' rights, environmental rights, and common sense gun control. The court is extreme. It is very extreme. It is out of touch with the American people. 
It is also painting itself as unaccountable. Just as Thomas has been receiving unreported gifts from a wealthy, conservative, very troubling donor for years, uh, the American people need and deserve a rational, fair, and ethical Supreme Court. In addition, every day where things are revealed, in addition to uh, Clarence Thomas and his issues, we have Justice Gorsuch, Gorsuch and his issues. We've got this, the uh, Chief Justice's wife and her issues. It tells you that unaccountability leads to corruption. The American people need and deserve a fair and ethical Supreme Court. And five of the nine sitting Supreme Court justices were nominated by two presidents who lost the popular vote. They then were confirmed by senators, them representing a minority of voters. We must abolish the filibuster and expand the court to restore public trust. Expanding the court would also serve to modernize and diversify it. Expansion would allow the president to increase racial and gender diversity on the court and to appoint justices with different types of professional experiences. It would let the justices hear more cases each term and return the court to the historical standard uh, to oversee each circuit. This is a very important time. There's no issue that's any more important than this. And now I'd like to, I don't need to introduce, I just need to present this grand woman here, Sasego Richards, for her comments. Thank you, Congresswoman. It's great to be here in your district. Um, thanks for your service. And we're here today um, because the Supreme Court is no longer a source of justice in America. Women have had their most fundamental freedom stripped away um, by the Supreme Court. And frankly, we live in fear of what's next. Despite their testimony uh, during confirmation hearings, reaffirming their support and respect for judicial precedent, five justices on the Supreme Court overturned nearly 50 years of the right to make our own decisions about pregnancy, a decision that is perhaps the most personal of any we make in our lifetime. I, I wanna put out, we didn't lose this right because somehow the right to abortion was no longer necessary in fact, it's now uh, not only common for women, it's medically incredibly safe. And we didn't lose this right because the American people decided that they changed their minds. In fact, support for Roe versus Wade has never been stronger. We lost this right because five members of the Supreme Court, three put on by Donald Trump in the most partisan possible fashion, decided that their own politics, their own religious beliefs were more important than the health and well-being of American women. Um, instead, but it's been interesting, of course, because this, the political backlash has been immediate and severe, and the personal toll on American women has been enraging. In state after state, voters have overwhelmingly reaffirmed their desire to live in a country that respects the most basic freedom, and yet this Supreme Court seems to believe they are above the law. Women across the country are being denied life-saving medical care because of the Dobbs decision, and doctors are being threatened with going to jail. In fact, it is no longer safe to be a pregnant person in the United States of America. In my own home state of Texas, recently, Amanda Zorowski uh, had to receive an emergency abortion after being denied care only because she went into septic shock um, and it is unclear that she will even be able to bear children in the future. This is 100% uh, a result of the Dobbs decision. This Supreme Court is holding America hostage. Just last week, Justice Alito was prepared to end access to medication abortion for all women in the country because, in his words, it was not shown that they are likely to, sur to suffer irreparable harm. This is how little he understands or cares about our health or our futures. We know from Justice Thomas's opinion in Dobbs that freedom to make our own decisions about pregnancy is just the beginning. Justice Thomas seems prepared to revisit other longstanding rights in America, including the right to birth control. This cannot stand. Our democracy is under attack, our right to control our bodies, our right to be safe from rampant gun violence, our right to vote and have fair representation, 
and our right to a democracy where elections can reflect the will of the people. This court is tainted by unethical behavior from the lack of financial disclosure to Justice Thomas's wife's involvement in efforts to subvert our democracy and overturn a presidential election. It is beyond time to reform this court so that we can restore the faith of the American people and advance justice and equality. And that's why we're here today. We need to restore balance to the Supreme Court, including expanding the court. We need to re restore integrity to the court by having a binding code of ethics. We need term limits. And this is not a tomorrow thing. This is a today thing. People's lives are at stake. Women's lives are at stake. And the time to act is now. And it's my great pleasure now to introduce a longtime friend and champion of everything good, Caroline Fr Fredrickson, who served on President Biden's Supreme Court Commission. Uh, thank you so much, Cecile. And, and um, I have to say, I'm really just feel tremendously honored to be up here um, with Representative Coleman um, and Cecile Richards, uh, two personal heroes of mine who have been such champions for justice in this country um, and are working so hard to make right what is going wrong. Um, as Cecile mentioned, I served on President Biden's Supreme Court Commission. I'm a law professor at Georgetown Law um, um, and ran an organization called the American Constitution Society for quite a long time. Uh, but as a member of the Biden Commission, we were, uh, we undertook a project of really exploring all of the different reform possibilities for the Supreme Court. And President Biden established this commission because it was recognized by so many people that the Supreme Court um, is putting the United States in a crisis. There are so many significant problems with the court. Um, so our mission was quite expansive. And we took over a year uh, to do a deep exploration into all the varieties of reforms and the constitutional questions and the possibilities of moving forward. Uh, we didn't actually make any recommendations. That was not our command from the president. We were asked to put forth uh, a, an analysis of what the reforms would do and what were the positives and negatives of each and how, how difficult might they be to accomplish. We looked at a variety of, of reforms that I think are tremendously important. Obviously, right now, ethics reform is on everyone's mind. Um, as both Cecile and Congresswoman Coleman have mentioned, a um, number of members of the Supreme Court have engaged in behavior that no member of Congress could behave in. Congress is held to a much higher standard in, in, in terms of receiving gifts, taking travel from wealthy donors, um, selling real estate, to, to those who have an interest in front of your court. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I could go on and on. We also looked at term limits, which is another reform I think is tremendously important. We are really unique in the world in terms of uh, democracies that have justices that serve for life. Every other major democracy recognizes that that is a recipe for bad outcomes, both because the judges become uh, above the law, they start to think they're not accountable, uh, and there's also change in society. It's really important to have some transition in your, in your country's highest court. Those are t really important reforms. And ethics, the ethics problems, I think, though, unfortunately, are really just a symptom of the biggest problem here, which, as I mentioned, is, is lack of accountability. Um, and and the, the disconnect between where the court is and where the American public and the majority of constitutional scholars believe the Constitution is and what it says and what rights it affords to us. The only reform that is going to deal with that and with the crisis that we're in is to expand the court. The, by expanding the court and adding several new justices, we would actually be able to rebalance the court so that we could have a court that was much more uh, in line with what we understand the Constitution to be and to protect. We've talked about where the court is on abortion, how it has decimated decades of precedent and taken away an absolutely fundamental right for American women and their families to protect their, their health and their futures. Guns, gun violence in America, 
Every single day, there is a mass shooting. Children are not taught to spell and to do math as soon as they're taught how to hide under their desk from a shooter in their classroom. This cannot stand, as Cecile said. This cannot stand. But there, is so, there are so many other areas. The student loans are under threat. President Biden's effort to help students under crushing burdens of debt. The Supreme Court's going to take that away. We have so little ability to deal with climate change in our country because the Supreme Court has said that the Equal Protection Administration cannot act to protect us. Voting rights. The Supreme Court has already done so much to deny the ability of minority populations to participate fairly in elections. People get it. Look what happened in Wisconsin so recently. The people of Wisconsin rose up and voted for a state Supreme Court that would respect fundamental rights and liberties. People in Israel are taking to the streets to demand that their judiciary be fair and impartial. So we need to take this on. We need to take the court and reform it. The amazing thing and the wonderful thing about this reform is it's totally in the hands of Congress. The Constitution does not set a size for the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has had different sizes throughout our history. And one of the times when the court size changed was after the Civil War, at a crisis moment where the Congress knew that without a change in the size of the court, the, the court would undo Reconstruction. We are at that kind of a moment right now where we have a court that is working to undermine our democracy. So we need to reform it. We need to expand it um, and save our country from the crisis we're in. Thank you. Are there any questions? I'd live with hopefulness because if I didn't, I wouldn't do any work. Um, so, and, and I know that in moments of crisis, people have come uh, to the aid of their country. And I think that the more people are hearing, the more coverage that you see, the more revelations of improprieties, judge by judge by judge by judge of the Supreme Court, um, people recognize that we have a problem. And people have, well, even the, um, the assessment or the appraisal of the court has decreased significantly. We, people do not trust the court, but they believe that they need to have trust in the court. And so while we have so many different things happening right now, people are becoming well aware of the fact that this pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness is being uh, attacked on every front from education to jobs to civil rights to women's rights to LGBTQ rights to all rights to uh, dealing with our climate. So I think that people are becoming more aware of the crisis moment in which we find ourselves. Can I add something? I, I think it's really important to point out that there has been a cynical effort by the Republican Party to politicize the Supreme Court. And we know that uh, Donald Trump promised the country um, that if he was elected, he would only nominate people um, to the Supreme Court that would overturn Roe versus Wade. And he made good on that promise. This court now has three appointees by Donald Trump, and that is exactly what they did. I think it's important for the American people to understand that who we elect affects the kind of judiciary we have. And to have a fair and impartial judiciary, we do need to elect people in office who respect that. What do you say to Republicans and the willful giving of the, the decisions of their own party agency as a sovereign autonomy because they believe all of this stuff that's being pushed into the media? What do you, what do you say to Republican men? What would you ask of them? What would you ask of Republican men right now? The 
be your authentic self. Um, recognize that this assault is upon your ability to think for yourself and to make decisions. And that since you're the only one that can have a baby, that can go through the trauma of, of uh, losing one or needing to uh, have an abortion, that you need to open your eyes and see for yourself. Right, and um, so I just wanted to respond to the question and say, I'm not sure I totally agree with you. I mean, the sort of the, 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 the sort of the, the thinking behind the question, and then say, look at Kansas. I think we act, there are actually a lot of Republican women and a lot of Republican men who disagree with the Dobbs decision, who disagree with the idea that we can take away basic rights from American women and families to decide when and how to have children. Uh, I, I think the people in, in Wisconsin, again, that vote was a, very much about abortion as well as about democracy. The idea that the court would be enforcing an 1848 law banning abortion, the people of Wisconsin didn't want that. So a supermajority came out to say no uh, and to vote for, um, for a judge, I can't say her last name. Um, Judge Judy. Judge Judy, Judy. <laughs> yes. Um, but so I would just say, I think there are certainly some. We may never get those. But I think those who are turning out to vote now actually need to turn out and speak in public because they, have, they share these views with us. Now they need to share them, not just in the voting booth, but outside as well. Um, well, so I think, you know, the, the, there are a number of different proposals, um, but um, adding um, preferably four, um, because you, want, you normally have a Supreme Court, not always, we have had evenly divided Supreme Courts, but in order to ensure that there's not an even division so that there can actually be uh, a majority decision to reach an outcome. Um, in order to balance the court in a way that will be much more reflective, I think, you know, the Congresswoman described how uh, so many members of this current majority, supermajority, were appointed by presidents who lost the popular vote. Um, democratically elected, Democratic presidents have, have not been able to um, uh, nominate the number of Supreme Court justices that would, would actually uh, be equal to their number of times they won the, uh, the popular vote. And so, um, so that is one proposal. Um, but expanding the court certainly at any number would help get us there uh, in order to first deal with the stolen seat um, under President Obama when Merrick Garland was not moved. Um, and then the total violation of process to move Amy Coney Barrett um, to the court well out of the window under which any other nominee would have ever been considered. Um, and then, of course, we cannot forget um, Justice Kavanaugh, who was put on the court despite the fact that there was never a thorough background um, investigation done on him. Um, and then Justice Gorsuch, for whom they changed the rules to get his nomination through. So, look, there's a lot to work with here that needs to be dealt with in order to ensure a court that is fair and balanced and reflective of Again, it's not about the popular majority. We're not voting for them, but they cannot be so radically out of step with the Constitution and our fundamental rights and liberties. Would you support a consensus of justices who uh, recognize that we know what we voted on and we know what we I think that the improprieties that have been identified with regard to um, any of the judges needs to be investigated and the process that uh, is, is in place to deal with those things should be followed. If you ask me about should, should that be done, I think everything should be done. 
I don't think any judge who doesn't have the moral fiber and the commitment to the Constitution should be on the bench right now. And I don't think that any judge that is of bad behavior, not good behavior, as um, one expects from their judge, judges, um, sh there's something should be done about that. Expanding the court, though, as an immediate response helps us to have a fairer, clearer, and um, a, a discussion, decision-making about what are going to affect us, whether it's birth control, a woman's right to choose, voting rights, gun safety laws, all of those things. They're all on the table. They all challenge our freedom, our safety, and our security, and we need a court that addresses it.